Hello and welcome to another edition of NAFDAQ and your health. Here is where we bring you up to date with NAFDAQ's activities with regards to its mandate of safeguarding the health of the nation. My name is Tosin Omolaja. Today on the program, we take a look back at NAFDAQ's growth and exploits over the last three years under the leadership of Professor Mujisola Adeyeye. When Professor Mujisola Adeyeye was appointed Director General of the National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control, NAFDAQ, in November 2017, the agency was at a most studied state. From the debt burden of about 3.2 billion naira to a dysfunctional internal system, dwindling staff morale, dilapidated laboratory equipment, and other tools, non-existent operational vehicles, and zero presence at the nation's port. Despite these humongous challenges, this illustrious academic of global reckoning took on the challenge, turned it into opportunity. Relying on her wealth of experience and wellspring of knowledge, immediately began the work of not only reviving NAFDAQ, but setting it on the world stage as a top-tier regulatory agency. When I came, I met a 3.2 billion naira debt. I don't know for how many years those have been accumulating, but 3.2 billion is 3.2 billion. Uh, and that was shocking to me, but it's a challenge, and I took it on. And I told my staff, the whole staff, that we're going to pay the debt. It sounded strange. How can you pay the debt? I said that is the way it is done. She immediately put several measures in place, which brought financial sanity to the agency and has improved NAVDAC's cash position in the Treasury Single Account, TSA, thereby enabling her to pay off the inherited debt within one year. NAVDAC has continued to maintain a zero debt profile ever since. I can say without uh, missing words that uh, Professor Adeyi Ade herself can be regarded as an accountant because immediately she came into power in 2017, um, she brought a lot of uh, innovations into the procedures and the uh, processing in finance and accounts. And uh, if I may say, in the last three years, a lot of things are already in place. And finance and account is no longer the finance and account that we used to know. When she came around, she was not comfortable. She said that she wanted to start a job on a fresh note. Fresh note in terms of making sure that all those areas of debt were settled. And you should set up, you should put the machinery in place to ensure that within the six, I mean the first six months that uh, all these uh, areas of debt were cleared and uh, before you knew it, these debts were cleared. It's not only that, look at the issue of a uh, budget. The, uh, the impress system that we used to know in Abda is a thing of the past now. Before she came around, all you just had to do then was to be a unit head. Then at every three months, a certain amount of money will be given to you. When she came around, she said that should stop. In place now, what we have is a budget allocation. This budget allocation is a way of every quarter. Uh, an amount of money will be given to the directors. And the, director, the, the directors are the, uh, the people that oversee the, the, the different directories that we have in NAFDA. The idea behind that is that uh, it is believed that uh, the directors, they, are, uh, they will be the better users of this budget allocation. They are the ones that know how their different directories will be run. In fact, the last three years have been very wonderful. DG is uh, the type of DG that, uh, that has brought transparency and accountability to the agency in terms of financial sanity. 
The dwindling image of the agency amongst its various stakeholders, and indeed the diminishing morale of its workforce, had to be urgently overturned and refurbished. Entrenching quality management systems across the entire agency as enshrined in the agency's new motto, customer-focused, agency-minded. When I got here and I met QMS for lab and QMS for one or two other directorates, I said, that's not QMS. QMS is agency-wide. Lab cannot have QMS and VMAP doesn't have QMS or registration doesn't have QMS or doesn't understand what it is. They are not on the same page. So anyhow, we started. And uh, when we have almost, and we cascaded it to the states, you know, it was all cascaded to, to the states. They said, oh, let's get our certification for the three. I said, no, we cannot get certification for three. It's agency-wide, and it didn't, people, many people didn't understand that it has to be agency-wide. I said, it is not something you learn and check, 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 check. I passed. No, it is a culture that we should marinate ourselves in it longer so that all the other directorates that are not yet at the same level will come to the same level. And that is why it took us about five or six months more. And we got our certification. The exponential increase in the scope of activities and the magic challenges made the imperative for us to create additional directories. So in 2019, in order to meet up with these challenges, the agency approached the Office of the Head of Service to restructure the agency. So at the end of the day, the agency was restructured into 18 directorates. I also have six zone offices that cater for activities at the zonal level. This uh, restructuring has impacted positively on the agency, especially on their activities. For instance, we upgraded the zonal offices to be headed by director. Prior to this time, most of our products are registered in Lagos. But with the current trend of encouraging the MSME, we saw the need to decentralize, decentralize the registration of our products. So the zonal officers were strengthened and they are now headed by directors. So such MSME products are now registered at the zonal level. Apart from that, other products that are not that did not even fall within the MSME are usually also registered in Lagos. Prior to this time, we used to have one directorate that is responsible for this registry. So that is the registration and regulatory affairs directory in Lagos. But with restructuring, the directory was split or was divided into two, so that we now have food registration and regulatory affairs that cater for food. We now have we also have drug registration and regulatory affairs that cater for pharmaceuticals, herbal medicines, and cosmetics. This has a parted positively. It will reduce the timeline when it comes to registration of products. And many people are able to register their business within the certain possible time and go to the market. The legal unit directory was also upgraded, it was just a unit, as it were, for that digital office, but not a directory in order to meet up with legal challenges and at the same time, with nursing complement of staff, it has now been possible to handle legal matters. Legal matters that ordinarily we have given out to external solicitors are not handled by our staff. There is no doubt about it that the children has impacted positively on the agency. And that's why we are moving at this pace that we are moving. All kudos to the DG who has the foresight and the need to do this. For the past three years, we've not even, there has not even been a single threat from the union. They want to go on strike because of the way we have carried them along when it comes to policy implementation. The DG has been transparent, has been open. It's like a mother to them as they are assisting the staff in many ways. The WHO Global Benchmarking was a very critical pathway to achieving a vision of a world-class NAFDAQ. And this, she and our team worked tirelessly on and have achieved quite a significant progress with. For both QMS and uh, Global Benchmarking, the goal is to use international best practices. So it's not like Nigeria is going to be different from Canada. 
Nigeria is going to be different from Japan. No. So that is essentially what uh, both QMS and global benchmarking is. Professor Adeye is very keen on ensuring that Nigeria attains true drug security. So from the get-go, she visited some pharmaceutical industries in Nigeria to review their status and capacity with a view to putting together policy direction to encourage local production of medicines in Nigeria on a sustainable basis. We have what is called 5 plus 5 year validity, meaning that you, we give you approval upon registration for five years. After five years, you can renew your product. We have changed that completely, meaning you cannot renew forever and keep importing. If you have been bringing it in for a long time, and now we see that there are so many companies that are doing the same thing locally, we advise you, start telling us how you want to start producing locally, migration to local production, local manufacturing. So the five plus five year validity is also going to help. Another aspect of it that is going to help that we have put in place is five year exclusivity uh, advantage, I will call it advantage. In which case, if you are a manufacturer and you did something innovative, we will allow you market exclusivity for five years. You will be the only one that will be selling that product for five years because that will give you time to recoup all the money that you have invested. To me, that is going to help our manufacturers to become more innovative. So that is also part of local manufacturing that we're encouraging. One of the ways we ensure compliance or help industries by um, producing guidance documents, which basically helps them know or rather understand what we're thinking, help them understand the processes, help them understand what they're expected to do. And that way it increases compliance. And also, you know, from the inspections we've carried out, we've tried to, you know, put um, a roadmap in place for some local industries to help them transit from rudimentary GMP uh, practices to um, WHO uh, requirements, which is more internationally recognized. And um, we also have carried out a survey, you know, and the survey for, on capacity utilization of the local pharma industry. You know, the outcome has shown that they have installed capacity to make a lot of products. Beyond local production of quality drugs, she has also worked relentlessly to ensure Nigeria keys into global traceability framework to ensure and guarantee drug safety. When we talk about traceability, we're really looking to see how we can monitor the progress or the movement of a product through the supply chain. It gives you visibility um, from manufacturing through the distribution all the way up to when it is dispensed and administered to the patient so you can see where the product is. It also allows you to secure the supply chain. Once you're able to um, use certain pieces of information, you know the source of the product, you know where it is at any point in time, and you're able to have assurance of the quality of the product, that your supply chain is protected, and it prevents the inf infiltration of substandard or falsified regulated products. Professor Adeyeye, in a determined effort to combat substandard and falsified medicines, illicit drugs and chemicals, as well as unwholesome foods, has deployed multifaceted measures and strategies. Rather than running after fake drug importers here in Nigeria, NAFDAQ has made it difficult, if not impossible, to ship fake drugs into Nigeria without being caught at the country of export which has in turn drastically reduced the hues and cries over arrests of fake medicine importers in Nigeria by NAFDAQ, as the agency has taken the battle to the countries where the products are being manufactured. 
The agency on the 9th of October 2020 blacklisted Mars Remedies PVT Limited India for the manufacture of falsified ciprofloxacin tablets BP 500 mg for Pinnacle Health Pharmaceutical Limited Lagos. In view of the unprofessional practice, the agency stated that all products manufactured by the company would no longer be allowed into Nigeria. The upgrade of the agency's laboratories across the country is one of the very key and indeed laudable achievements of Professor Mujisola Adeyeyi. She prioritized ensuring that the laboratories are fitted with the latest and state-of-the-art equipment, cutting across its food, drug and vaccines laboratories to enable the agency deliver on its mandates of safeguarding the health of every Nigerian. NAVDAC has seven labs. Five of them are now accredited, including the Vaccines and Biologics Lab, accredited with ISO 17025. So aside from the ISO certification, you have to have ISO compliant equipment. Because you cannot say you have ISO certified lab and be using equipment that is 15 years old. Because all equipment now are being manufactured to be ISO certified. Meaning that the ease of accumulating data, the ease of analyzing data, the ease of retrieving data, the ease of securing data are much better now than what it was 15 years because it's now ISO compliant. Nigeria is also part of the global community where peace, peace is advocated. So we have now equipment that we can use for prohibition of chemical weapons. The government is supporting us on that because our lab was chosen as the, one of the labs, NAVDAC lab was chosen as one of the labs that can handle such pieces of equipment. The good thing is that equipment that can be used for prohibition of chemical weapons can also be used in testing food, you know. So our lab is very central, our lab extremely important in order to ensure that quality of whatever we are regulating is maintained. The management, especially with the uh, leadership of uh, Professor Moji Adeye, has been very tremendous. We have started acquiring state-of-the-art technology State of the art equipment, and we are looking at research based regulatory activities. The lab has 17, ISO 17025 accreditation in 17 testing schools. This 17 testing school where we have accreditation confirms on us that we have the technical ability, then we have the personnel and the management requirement to make sure that we test medicines according to international standards and any results released from this laboratory cannot be faulted anywhere all over the world. The agency's vaccine laboratory have also received significant uplift. As we speak, NAVDAC is working towards a target where Nigeria will be able to manufacture our own vaccines. But it doesn't matter how much research and development you did, if you cannot translate it into product that will help the public, it's almost nothing, it's almost useless. But we are now getting there. Investigations and enforcement are critical to achieving the agency's mandate. The successes recorded over the last three years have been nothing short of resounding. Since the assumption of duty of uh, Professor Mojishola Deyeye uh, in NAVDAC, uh, we've made uh, great strides. Uh, within the three years, uh, we've been able to, number one, to dismantle some of the criminal networks, uh, as well as destroy very substantial amount of the banned tramadol. In 2019, we destroyed uh, banned tramadol, or what about one, what about two billion naira as well? In the East, that was in Oka, 
then from the same 2019 to date uh, we got about 45 uh, container load of tramador working with PID Post Inspection Directorate of NAVDA, our sister directorate and uh, as well as the customs and the street value is 1.7 trillion naira. We have strengthened our intelligence as well as our efforts at ensuring that uh, all this could not happen again. One of such is the integration of NAVDAC uh, on the platform, on the trade portal platform fully, which now makes us to see some of the consignments that are coming. And uh, the intelligence and monitoring unit of uh, Port Inspection Directorate uh, is a small unit, but they do so much work there where they could actually track a departure of a container from anywhere in the world and they monitor it up till when it gets to Nigeria. True scan device is another piece of tech that the agency has deployed to do on the spot test of drugs and products in assessing their quality and true nature. The MSME sector is one that's very dear to Professor Adeyeye and in keying into the federal government's vision of diversifying and spurring the economy through MSMEs, she created the Lagos office specifically for this purpose, and also to put in place several initiatives to encourage participation in this sector. And knowing the MSMEs as a critical core to the economy of this country, NAVDAC is doing a lot to promote the growth of MSMEs so that as many Nigerians as possible that can work on NAVDAX regulated products are registered. We would need to assist them because MSMEs are the ones driving the economy of this country. During the peak of the pandemic, she led the agency to further provide palliatives for this ever-growing sector. We listen to their cries and things that bothered them concerning their business and of course we do not want people's businesses to to die and that was why we said e-registration if we can put if we can come up with e-registration for the msmes on our napams because that is that is the portal that we use for e-registration then people can sit at home put in the application do everything they have to do and if they are in production we can find a way of carrying out inspection either by remotely or we actually go there, pick their samples, send it to the lab, you see. So they're not even having any contact. They're only going to have contact with the inspectors. And then if the products pass, all they see is that they get information via email that their product has passed. The pandemic also proved NAVDAC's preparedness in the areas of herbal medicine. Herbal medicine producers, apart from being able to take advantage of the agency's electronic platforms for registration, also now have the opportunity of taking their products to larger markets, courtesy NAFDAQ several interventions. What we are doing now in NAFDAQ uh, is to ensure that our herbalists and our researchers come together. We inaugurated a herb, the Herbal Medicine Product Committee. We want to bridge the gap, increase the trust between the two, because as a researcher, you cannot assume you can just get uh, a plant bacteria and make it yours. You have to recognize that the herbalist is the one that has the idea. So that our own herbal medicines can be translated into products. Joining over 170 countries around the world that use mobile applications in reporting adverse drug reactions, the Med Safety app is NAVDAC's latest infusion of technology to its service delivery. That's how much we can take today on the program. Importing, distributing, producing and selling fake drugs and cosmetics, adulterated food and so on are criminal activities that destroy lives. Join the fight against these heinous crimes by reporting any suspicious activity in your area to NAVDAC. Let's join hands to safeguard the health of our nation. Till next week, stay safe.